all day. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Ship Flip channel. There's a story here about the history of e-com. Just trying to give you guys a little bit of uh, insight to what it used to be like in the early Wild West days of e-com. I started e-com in 1998 uh, and that was on BeckettOnline.com. Uh, it was Beckett, I guess it was Beckett Online or Beckett.com back then. And basically what that was, was if you remember the price guides for looking up sports cards, well, they went online in 98 and it changed the sports card game completely. Um, about that time also is when eBay was starting to really um, get noticed and get known uh, for being a place that you could buy stuff. And so in those early days, actually my family, we were kind of poor and so we didn't even really own a computer. Uh, my buddy Dan, ba Danny Bossinger, his Dan Bossinger now, Daniel Bossinger, whatever he goes by, um, he basically had a computer and um, we would go over to his house and I had my account set up on his computer and it was linked to an email address that you would have and you could create an email address any old time that like, so this was before, I mean, this was long before like creating a hundred Gmail accounts for a hundred different things. And this was at the time where you could basically, if you needed to create another account on a site, all you really needed to do was have a different email address and you could sign up for Excite, uh, you know, Yahoo, whatever. And it got to the point where, um, that that company Beckett stopped allowing certain websites their email addresses to be used because people were just building like 14 dummy accounts and doing all kinds of weird stuff. And there, But the reason I want to tell this story is because scamming was really rampant in those days. And um, the other thing is that like the credibility and stuff that you like know of today, it didn't really exist. Like you were just trusting people blind a lot of the time. Feedback didn't even exist back then. There was no such thing as feedback. You had no way of telling whether the guy you were dealing with was legitimate or not. And the thing that you did to convince them is you would have, do you have reps or references? And these would be basically just email addresses of other people that you had done successful deals with. But whenever you were new on the site, you obviously didn't have that yet. And so in order to even get somebody to trade with you early on, you had to lie, right? And so you would create other Excite email addresses that were yours and if you did, you know, complete maybe two or three trades, you would throw those on there too. But then you would have your best friend, like I had Danny's email address on there because they wanted 10 references, right? And so let's say three of them were guys that I had actually successfully traded with. And those were the only three trades I've ever done. So those are the first three. Then I'm going to put Danny on there. Then I'm going to put Danny's dad on there. Then I'm going to put uh, the three different accounts that I opened on three different websites with for just to have an email address just so I could provide it to somebody. And then what they would do is email these email addresses and be like, Hey, did you do a trade with so-and-so? This is his screen name. This is his username, whatever you want to call it. This is the email address he's trading from. And of course, early on, all of those email addresses were just people that I had ready to go. I can be like, yeah, of course. And so you can see that if you were a scammer, it would be that easy, right? Like that's all you would have had to have done. I had to do it just to get people to trade with me. I was a 15, 14 year old kid. I wasn't going to tell them that. And uh, I was trying to trade with, you know, adults over the internet. It worked. I got enough reputation that I'm able to trade and sell whatever. And um, basically I'm, I'm shipping to all 50 states by 14, 15 years old. I had a firm grasp on how postage rates worked, um, how to package things how to, uh, what they cost to go to different parts of the country. And I was learning all of that by 14, 15 years old. And, um, you know, this was definitely the wild west. We were only seeing the tip of the iceberg at that point in time. Like cards was just the tip of the iceberg. You were going to start buying groceries online. You were going to start buying all that. And only the reputable sellers are going to be the ones that people trust to buy from. You know, there were so many manipulators, so many scammers. It was hard to even do business at that point in time, but somehow, uh, somehow you, you just figured out like what to look for in emails and what to look for on people's profiles. And then people started building lists of like who the scamming screen names were on there. And they would start tracking IP addresses to know like if that person signed up under a different account and they started to catch up to these people. Right. But early on, I got ripped off more times than, you know, I can count on one hand. I mean, I got ripped off, you know, weekly, I would send a card and never get something back. Um, there was no way of knowing like that somebody sent the right item. They could put tracking on it and just send the wrong item. But even back then, tracking wasn't really part of it. 
you would pay extra sometimes for a signature confirmation, but tracking wasn't really a thing yet. They didn't track packages like that. You would just get a signature confirmation uh, for an extra buck or two. So that way the person, the person had to sign and they couldn't lie and say they never received it. But you can see how wild that was back then. No feedback, no, uh, basically no paper trail to who you were, like just what you said. People were going off of that. Um, there was no tracking of packages. There was none of that. And so you can think of it like the Wild West, train robbery, you know, shootouts, taking the law into their own hands. Well, that was basically what the early days of e-commerce was like. I, I very much so consider it like the Wild West. There weren't, there weren't very many rules and there weren't very many people enforcing the rules. And there were a lot more people breaking the rules than there were trying to stand up for what's right. So um, it was a very, very hard uh, environment to succeed in. But those of us that made it through, we came out smarter and more the wiser for it. Um, and it just today's e-commerce is so easy to me because of this, because I'm able to sniff out a scammer in a heartbeat. I can tell just by the way they pitter patter and what they type, whether they're a scammer or not. Um, I can tell, uh, you know, when shipping totals aren't correct. I can tell, um, when things were damaged in, because of poor packaging because of this, um, there's just so many things that I learned. Today, there's not really a Beckett.com uh, marketplace anymore. There is, but nobody really trades on it. It became so um, hard to keep up with because Beckett started charging subscription rates on there. They started charging you to organize your cards on there, and things got just just too hard for people to want to do it. It didn't really make sense to pay $20 a month or $30 a month to be able to do that whenever... Um, you could just go look at sold prices on eBay to see what stuff was selling from. The Beckett price guide, by the way, just a little nugget of information, that's not a value guide. That is a stock market sales history type guide. The, the high and the low price value on a Beckett is the range of prices that they have observed the card selling for on the open market. The problem that this uh, came into whenever e-commerce became about is that people were now able to look and see what shit was actually selling for, and they could compare that and be like, wait a minute, it's selling for a different price than this book is telling me it's worth. So therefore, this book is wrong, because it doesn't matter that the book tells me this is worth $25. If somebody's only willing to give me 10 for it, and nobody's willing to give me a dollar more than 10 for it, then it's actually worth 10. And this book is just romanticizing things. And so that really flipped the card game upside down. It's e-commerce kind of ruined Beckett's uh, stranglehold on what card values were. And so now all of a sudden, people weren't trading in good faith. They weren't buying in good faith. They were, they were looking at their own stuff to do that. And so um, that's kind of a, an overview of, of how things were from Beckett transitioning into eBay, transitioning into Amazon, and now here we are today. Everything is feedback-based. Everything is tracked you know exactly when packages are going to arrive. It's There's just no way. You can't sign up for multiple accounts. If you do, your shit will be shut down. Like everything is so much more uh, organized and more seller friendly now than it was back then. And it's probably more buyer friendly too because you could get ripped off buying something on the internet just as easily back then. Um, if you wanna hear more stories, just tune into the Ship Flip channel. I'm always telling stories or talking flip life, trying to share with you uh, tips that might help you in your reselling business. Uh, but in the meantime, go ahead and hit that like button to uh, like this video and uh, comment anything that you think um, that you know or you remember or just funny stories that you might have had from the early e-commerce days. But in the meantime, keep on flipping.